looking at people who live a long time and cultures that have a lot of elderly people over 100. The type of foods they eat typically have a lot more plant um, than just pure meat. From your perspective as a geneticist, why do people have such different physical reactions to viruses like the coronavirus? Why are some affected and others not? Is it a genetic thing or do you think it's something else? Well, it seems to be both. There are variations in the ACE2 receptor that seem to be involved, but most of it, as far as I can tell from my reading, uh, is actually people's age. That, that's tenfold worse than anything else. Further down the list is diabetes, heart disease. Uh, but you know, we're literally talking about aging here. Aging is your biggest risk. If you've been healthy your whole life and done the right things, uh, that's gonna protect you from dying from COVID-19. Um, because a lot of things go wrong as you get older that make you susceptible to the disease. Um, one for sure is that your immune system is a lot less resilient. You know, when, when we ex are exposed to a virus, our immune cells will multiply. Well, actually, as you get older, you have a lot less ability to do that. Um, and there are even uh, a lot less variants of your immune cells. So you can have a hundred year old person has a lot fewer types of immune cells available to, to fight an infection. We, we generally have clones of clones in our bodies. We get older, whereas when we're young, it's, a, it's like a, a melange, a whole different uh, set. So the immune system is screwed up, but there's also other issues. As you get older, you get more and more inflammation in general. There's a protein in the body called, or a complex of proteins called the inflammasome, and it controls your inflammation as you get older it's harder and harder to keep that at bay. And so older people in general tend to have this hyper immune response um, that actually of, often can do, do them in. And it's not because of the virus, it's due to the body overreacting to it. Is there anything that people that are more susceptible currently that they could do to help combat the coronavirus or viruses like that without staying at home all day? and not being around it? Is there things that they could do to enhance the immune system and, and support them? Oh, sure, there are. I mean, if, if anybody is, is out of shape uh, or is carrying too much weight, you know, th those are the, the easiest things and most likely to work is to lose some of that excess weight and, and get moving. Um, these things are known to greatly improve your uh, immune system and including lowering inflammation. Now, not everybody can do that, right? People who are at an advanced age, you can't expect them to go out on a run or even perhaps to, to restrict their food. But, you know, people who are middle-aged, you know, like myself, uh, I've been working out a lot more, exercising a lot more to make sure that my body's uh, ready uh, if I catch it. What is, what is exercise or shorter moments of bodily stress? Why does that boost immune system and, and help us anti-age? Well, there are a lot of answers to that. Um, but in general, the, the summary is that these protective pathways that we've discovered dampen inflammation when it's too high, and they also allow the immune system to attack a virus when it's needed. Um, one possibility, and this hasn't been proven, but there's, there's some evidence in over the last six months of, of published work, is that uh, as we get older, we lose the ability to make a molecule called NAD, which we work on in my lab. And without NAD, our bodies are not very well equipped to fight diseases, including infections. Mm. This inflammasome, which I'm kind of showing as a ball, but it's obviously much smaller, it is regulated by the levels of NAD. Um, NA, what does NAD stand for? Oh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Um, it, think of NAD as a small chemical that we need for life. It controls about... 500 or so chemical reactions in our body, it's needed for those. Wow. But we make less of it and we destroy more of it as we get older. Um, but here's the thing, that two of these sirtuin um, proteins that we work on in my lab are controlling inflammation through this inflammasome protein complex. And as, as we lose NAD, one possibility in older people is that the inflammasome is now dysregulated and that goes crazy and leads to this cytokine storm that uh, can eventually kill people. We have drugs that we're, that people are trying to dampen that down. And one of the things that we're trying now in a clinical trial 
uh, is a molecule that the body can use to make more NAD, uh, an NAD precursor, we call wow. it. Wow. And there are patients being dosed right now in, I think, four hospitals, or, or at least going to be four hospitals, where uh, we'll see if that is one of the ways to give older people resilience. So the body stops making NAD, stops producing it the older we get, and it's one of the causes that helps us defend against infections, inflammation, disease? Well, we think so. What we see is when there's an infection, um, the, the virus actually chews up a lot of NAD. So cells, even if you're not old, the virus will deplete cells of NAD. Mm. And we think that that's a problem. Cells need NAD for life. If we don't have NAD, we're, we're dead in about 30 seconds. Wow. Um, but also without that energy, you could easily imagine that the body is unable to fight the infection, but also could be an issue late in the, the viral infection where the, the body starts turning on itself. At the moment, there's no supplements out there that you could buy that have NAD to help you replenish NAD, is that right? Oh, well, so, you know, I'm a Harvard professor. Uh, I don't hawk any molecules or recommend any. I have to be very clear right. about that. Um, but there, there are people, uh, some companies that are selling NAD precursors. Really? Out there. Interesting. Okay. I don't endorse or recommend any of those. Sure, sure, sure. Testosterone is also something that men lose that stop producing over time as well, which helps you, is it just look younger or be younger? Uh, well, there, there was a set of very expensive clinical trials done with testosterone. And the results from those studies were that there wasn't a change in long-term health. The results were they were negative for slowing down aging. Huh. That said... You know, testosterone will help you build muscle. Uh, and having muscle is very important as you get older, of course. You don't want to be frail. Uh, and if you fall over, you want to be able to be resilient and not break a bone. Every, every few minutes, somebody falls, an elderly person falls over, breaks a hip and doesn't recover from that. Oh, man. So anything that you can do to be more flexible and resilient and have more strength, you know, that, that to me sounds like a good thing for elderly people. Got it. You're in your 50s or 40s, I don't know. I couldn't say I'm an expert on that. I'm going to ask you another question that might be controversial based on a couple of previous um, doctors that I've had on. I had Dr. Ronja Patrick on, and I asked her, I said, hey, what are some of the, the healthy foods that are marketed as healthy that, in your opinion, aren't as healthy as they claim to be, essentially, was the question I asked. And she said grapes have a lot of sugar in them that spike my blood pressure. I think she wears like a glucose monitor. So she's monitoring all of her food and constantly testing it. She said, when I was eating grapes, like my glucose levels went way up, skyrocketed. And I realized that that's not good for the body to have, you know, grapes, a lot of grapes. And you can transition it into having blueberries or something else that might be better for uh, the nutritional benefits. I put that online and people slammed me for that. And then uh, Dr. Gundry, said that he doesn't think, uh, you know, modified apples the way they are now, how we modify them, how they're so big, how they're full of so much sugar. He's like, I don't think that's good to have these big apples that are modified because of the sugar and the fructose in these big apples, like a honey crisp or something. And he was saying we should be having a lot less fruit because of the fructose levels. What's your thoughts on fruit in general? Uh, should we be eating fruits every day? Is it something, we, you know, I've been heard in the past that like we only used to have fruits right before the winter to kind of store up the fat and, and a seasonal thing. There's a lot of fruit eaters out there that believe in eating fruits, only fruit all day. I'm just trying to find the answers. I don't know the, the truth of the matter, but what's your thoughts based on research? So research, we don't research fruits, of course, but we do research the effects of sugar on the body. Uh, and it's not good. So try and, to keep... and is that all sugar or is that fruit sugar or refined sugar? What's, do we know that? Well, there's, there's glucose and fructose. Okay. So it doesn't really matter where you get it. These are just chemicals. That's the same chemical wherever you get it from. Glucose, you need glucose, right? We, we, again, we die without glucose. But the foods in, in our world are so full of sugars that we're constantly feeding ourselves uh, more sugar than we ever would have experienced even just a hundred years ago or 50 even. 
Um, so where, where do I come down on this? Well, let, let me tell you from my own experience. It's probably better to give you my example yes. than preach to others. Yes. Um, I, I definitely like fruit and I eat fruit and I encourage it with my kids for sure. Uh, but there, are, it's, a, it's a balance. You want the most nutrition and vitamins uh, and, and the lower amount of sugar. And on a scale of, of that ratio, uh, I think Rhonda Patrick's right that grapes have more sugar than nutrition compared to other fruits. Mm. So the types of fruits that I like to have are ones that have lots of polyphenols, colored fruits such as blueberries, blackberries, those things. Um, you don't want to eat too many of them, of course, because then you, you're basically eating tons of sugar in it anyway. But yeah, blueberries I would have in, in a yogurt in the morning if I had, had some. Right. Um, the, the other fruit that I think is worth looking at is cantaloupe or rock melon. Um, that, I believe, has the most uh, nutrition versus sugar of any fruit. Um, so we, we try to eat those kind of uh, melons as well. You know, water, watermelon probably isn't in that category, but we still eat it in summer. The, the point in my family and in my life is uh, we're not so strict that, that we avoid every type of food. I'll, I'll even eat a hamburger or whatever if I feel like it. But most of the time I try to focus on, on plants um, and have meat as something that, uh, like a reward, even though I, I much prefer the taste of meat than, than just leafy vegetables. But um, I think that it's borne out just looking at people who live a long time and cultures that have a lot of elderly people, over 100, the type of foods they eat typically have a lot more plant um, than just pure meat. I know I'm going to get hate meal as well from the carnivores, but it's important people know I'm, I'm not saying don't eat meat. I'm just saying the kind of balance, if you want to focus on types of foods uh, for longevity, that's what the data says. Gotcha. Do you know if um, the people in the, the blue zones who are living over a hundred, are they, are they eating? I'm hearing you say they eat more plant-based. Are they eating lots of meat and lots of fruit as well? Or are they limiting intake on some of those areas? Well, they seem to do all the right things. Uh, so it's it, don't eat a lot. Um, on the island of Okinawa, they tend to stop eating when they're only 70% full, which is a very good idea. Gosh, good. it's like I I keep eating until I'm 70% over full. Yeah. <laughs> then, then you can regret, then I regret it. But, You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. but you also, you, you work out more than I do. I trade do. hard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they tend to eat the right types of foods, which are packed with these polyphenols, these little chemicals that are found in plants, when, particularly when those plants are stressed out. They don't eat a lot of processed foods, which kills a lot of these vitamins and polyphenols as well. They eat colored foods, which, which as I mentioned, is, is a good thing. They tend to have good social life. They tend to move a lot. They do gardening. They do walking as they get older. These are all things that just make a lot of sense anyway. Uh, we, we know that exercise and eating these healthy, fresh foods are, are good for us, no matter how old we are. In terms of chemicals in, in the diet, olive oil, for example, has a lot of oleic acid. And a lab just last year showed that oleic acid works just like resveratrol to activate the sort of 2-in-1 enzyme, this protective defense enzyme. That So normally you would have to be hungry to turn this on, this enzyme on that we work on. But now we know that you can probably take some resveratrol or some olive oil to, to activate it artificially. Well, Gundry would say the whole purpose of food is to get as much olive oil in your body as possible. He's a big believer in olive oil and how it's like helps you anti-age. So this is fascinating stuff. Again, I hope want to make a note that I hope all the fruit eaters out there don't hate on us. I'm just trying to find the answers. And uh, David is uh, giving some of the research that he's seen from his experience as well. If you want more greatness in your life, then you got to check out this video right here. If you're walking in the direction of greatness, you walk in the direction of excellence, you're going to be uncomfortable. If you want to be an Olympic athlete, you got to get up early in the morning, you got to work out, you got to be uncomfortable for, for years, for years, periods of time.